So yeah, we're going to talk about the current state of Protoss 2.5 and Basic System 1.7. Uh, these are in development. Uh, development was pretty rapid uh, last year, and then the, the VinHD prototype cards came in, and Protoss pro progress slowed a bit. Um, but uh, there's lots of cool things to show you and talk about, and uh, we'll just get into it. So um, the first thing to do is see if we can get. Uh, Get back to our program. There we go. All right. So, um, so the first things that you'll notice here that are different is there's a upgraded version of Bitsy by, and um, so with Protoss 2.5 we have lowercase file name support, um, and that the implementation of the lowercase file name uh, matches what GSOS and the Finder uh, use which means that all files are in uppercase in the directory entries, but there are 16 bits uh, where each set bit says that that character should be dropped to lowercase. So if uh, an application isn't aware of lowercase, they will just read the directory entries and see all uppercase names. If they, are, uh, if they support the new, the new lowercase capabilities, then they can drop the, the characters to lowercase. And in addition, Cross 2.5 automatically uses those lowercase bit flags and converts the uppercase characters to lowercase um, automatically, unless it's a two or two plus, in which case it leaves them uppercase. Um, so uh, also the bottom uh, border is gone, and that has opened up the number of files that can be uh, viewed at once in Bitsy by from, uh, is now 22 in, instead of 20. So we have 10% more files. Um, there's also a few more options here. Um, we now have the ability to hit delete to go right back to GSOS on a GS machine. So if you are using the Finder and then you want to do some stuff in 8-bit land for a while, you can run Protoss 8 and do multiple apps and then hit delete from here when you're ready to go back to the Finder. Um, and then also, with Bitsy by you've always been able to hit a slot to see whatever, uh, you know, whatever disks are in those slots. But if you have like a DOS 3.3 disk and you put it in, say, slot 2 here, Bitsy by will say, I don't know what's, what's in that slot, but you can hit reset and just boot it. So any of the slots that you're browsing to, even if it doesn't know what's in that slot, you can just hit reset and boot right there. So effectively, it's combining what used to be in Bitsy boot, which was a return to GSOS and a reset and a, and a boot feature. That's all now built into the default Bitsy by launcher inside Protoss. So it's, it's handy. Um, let's see, uh, other changes I think we'll need to go to basic to demonstrate. Um, so one nice improvement is uh, in earlier versions of BASIC on a 2E or 2C, you'd hit delete key and you'd get the checkerboard every time. So that's now fixed. Uh, hitting delete key will actually delete the character. Um, so, you know, that was a tough one. You know, it, it took more than 30 years, but, you know, eventually, <laughs> eventually, you know. Uh, so, uh, so that's a good one. Um, there's a new command called online, in case you uh, want to know what devices you have in your system, Sweet. knowing the slot and the drive, what it's called, and how much free space, that's kind of a useful thing. Um, so that's now built in. Um, and uh, another thing that's useful <laughs> is, um, so the, 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 the year has been expanded from seven bits, which is 126, 127 years was what uh, ProDOS and BASIC supported in the past, 1900 to Basically, if I was going to be 1999, of course, but, uh, the world didn't end, so that's good. Um, but, um, but yeah, so now uh, Protoss and basic.system have a 10-bit year, so that's 1,024 years from uh, 1900, so now we can make it to uh, 2924 before the world ends. So that part's good. Um, and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, for a while. Yeah, for a while, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, there is still a year 20, uh, 2040 problem, at which point the 32-bit the uh, uh, timer in seconds on the GS, that will expire, or basically wrap around, and we will go back to the Stone Ages, apparently. Uh, yeah. uh, what is GSOS, uh, ProDOS FST uh, Yeah, it hasn't been updated yet, so that's one of the uh, to-do items. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be calling for what help. Happened, what happens with it? What does it wind up doing? Uh, it just ignores the extra three bits. So as far as it's concerned, it'll just wrap from 19 or from 2040 back to 1900. Uh, but I'm hoping we get that fixed before be before that happens. Uh, yes. 
And um, let's see. Um, where, where are the upper three bits? The upper three bits are in the um, the date field had a month, right. uh, day, day of the month, yeah. and the day of the month went from one to thirty-one. Right. Fits in five bits with three zeros above it. <laughs> so the the uh, upper three zero bits are now used as extended year uh, support. Um, there's also, although been, there's also been uh, a lot of kind of thinking and work about uh, expanding the directory entry format. Right now it's 42 bytes and we're keeping it there for compatibility reasons. I talked last year about maybe expanding it. Um, so there's discussions going with multiple people about what kind of expansion would be a good idea and worth it and blah, blah, blah. But there definitely is going to be an impact on software to make a directory entry size change. So we're, we're, we're making progress there, but there's really nothing to announce at this stage. It's kind of in progress. Yeah. In the lowercase file name support, you mentioned that it'll keep them all uppercase for an two or two plus. I didn't know two and two plus could run for us. Yeah. They can up to one point nine, I think. Well, no. So that's so from that was why I made the two point four one. Um, so so starting with two point four and forward, um, Protoss now runs all the way back to the integer Apple two. So it's uh, so so Protoss is now kind of as universal as as DOS three three is. All yeah, it's all 6502 code, and and yes. Yeah, so, so now even the even the uh, the integer Apple IIs or the or the uh, Apple II pluses <coughs> with 6502 processors or unenhanced IIes, all of those can run um, CFFA ca cards with 16 uh, drives because SmartPort works. <coughs> Excuse me. And SmartPort was one of the big additions in Protoss II that was locked out of uh, the earlier machines. <coughs> Sorry. So. Um, yeah, so the, the, the year support, um, <clears throat> the other change, which I don't have an easy app to demo, is that the, um, <clears throat> the dash command will now uh, load uh, pro command files. So pro command has a lot of interesting extensions. It's Glenn Breeden's package of, of Protoss add-ons. <clears throat> Those pro, pro command files expect to be loaded at 4,000. So uh, basically on system now, if you do a dash and a, and a file that has a type CMD, um, Protoss file type CMD, it will load it at 4,000 and, and run it. So basically the command file is going to be auto-run, auto-installed, uh, which is handy. And then another kind of significant change to the dash command is for both binary uh, files and system files, uh, you can do arguments now. So you can do dash, you know, copy file one, file two, for example, if you want to run a copy command or whatever. So... Um, as many as you want. So basically what happens now is uh, basically that system, when it would parse running commands, whether, whether with B run or actually it's, it's with dash, it uh, wouldn't allow anything after the command. So now the parser uh, allows you know, extra arguments and it ignores them and it puts the whole string of what the user typed uh, at 200. And so when a program is started up, it can look there and it can find the path name to itself, it can find the arguments, um, so that's pretty useful. And then combining uh, that with the, oh, I guess the other one I haven't talked about, which is pretty useful, is um, uh, oops, let's see if I can get in here. Would you, dem would you mind demoing opening uh, a program with an argument? Because uh, yeah, that's I don't, I a really significant <coughs> thing. Yeah, un un unfortunately, the only tools that I have written to do that are for the VidHD, the VidHD utilities, which require the real hardware. So I, I kind of realized I didn't have anything written that I could, that I could demo. Um, so, uh, so if we're in a subdirectory and say that we have something in the parent directory, uh, in the past you'd have to retype that whole, uh, the whole path. Now we can just go up a level. Uh, and so now we're, we went up to the Merlin directory, or we can do... Uh, up a couple levels, um, and now our prefix is up at the root. So th this is a pretty big thing as far as you can have an application which gets installed somewhere on a hard drive. It doesn't need to know the name of the hard drive. It doesn't need to know how deep it is in the hierarchy of the hard drive. It can have subfolders, and those subfolders can come back up to the, to the parent without having to go all the way to the root or know the name or any of the rest of that stuff. Now, um, the way this is implemented, it's not quite the same as, as on uh, Unix because uh, this isn't a directory entry or anything like like, like Unix would do. The, um, the file name parser in Protoss it used to have two types of path names. They would either have a full path name that started with a slash and had to be everything, or it would be a partial path name which is always just tacked onto the end of the prefix. 
So what I, what I changed is the partial path name parser <laughs> now recognizes as many leading dot dot slashes as you want to have, and it will strip off one degree of prefix and then reconstruct a whole new full path name as if you typed the whole thing uh, without you having to know what it is. But one when, when consequence of that is you can't do uh, some number of dot dots, then some number of names, and then some more dot dots. You know, however many directories that you want to pop, those all have to be at the, at the start of the partial prefix. But in practice, this totally gets the job done as far as being able to move around in directories without nearly as much typing and pain. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so this combined with the arguments uh, is important because now you can give arguments which just say go dot dot or whatever. So, uh, so those two things, I think, open up a lot of interesting possibilities as far as uh, options for basic system improvements or tools that help basic or protoss. So lots of things can be done. Uh, so that's pretty handy. Uh, okay. And um, let's see. Okay, so now let me go back to the slides, and we'll see how, how well I was able to remember all the new, new stuff. Do you only have um, one block free or is that a bug? Uh, no, I probably have one block free. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, it's, uh, yeah, rather, let's see. Uh, yeah, everyone agrees. <laughs> oh, and yeah, and zero blocks free on the uh, on Protoss 2. Yeah. Which sounds right. Okay, so um, let's see if I can get over here. <coughs> Fortunately, I have way too many things running, so. My system is pokey. All right. Um, so yeah, this is a quick summary of the features and see what I forgot, if any. Um, so yeah, we have the lowercase file names. Um, now, the way that I'm currently disabling lowercase on the 2 and 2 plus is it looks at Prodos's uh, machine type ID in the global page of BF, whatever it is. And if the machine type is a 2 or 2 plus, then it just disables returning lowercase names. If it's a 2E, 2C, GS, then what uh, Prodos does is every time it reads the uppercase names off the disk, it also goes grabs the, the case bits and changes the uppercase names to lowercase and then passes them to the app application um, so that applications get automatically, automatically get the lowercase files without having to know about this case bits and where they are in the machinery. So it's, it's, it's fairly automatic. Um, now, the, the, there, is, there are a few applications which don't like uh, seeing lowercase names. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there's the dot dot support, um, and then the, the 1,000 year support. Um, let's see. Oh wait, I think I may have I may have a mistake here because my slides are confused. Hold on. Where did my slides go? Be able to have two files with basically the same name but different capitalizations. Uh, no, because because they'll be stored in the directory structure as if they're with they with the same name because it would be all all uppercase. So that's one of the reasons that it's done this way is there's no chance for collisions on the names. Um, all right. The next question was if you did, then how would you tell which one was which on the two or two plus? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> if you run on an integer Apple two, you can't actually. Run integer basic programs. I assume because there's no integer basic system. Uh, no, there there is a uh, there is a version of integer basic that has been created uh, that runs out that does not run the language card. It runs down lower, and so with that version, uh, yeah, you can you know you can do uh, do integer basic. But yeah, really, it would be nice to have a a, a more supported version of integer basic uh, under Protoss. Particularly like it with um, the 2B and, t and C and GS where you have 120K of memory and maybe you can put integer in the OGS language card. I mean, it would take some surgery probably to make that stuff happen, but it should be doable. Um, okay, so yeah, the bitsy by changes were expanding the file list, uh, adding lowercase file names, uh, reset to reboot any slot, and return to GSOS. Um, for the basic system, we have the delete key, the online uh, dash, We'll run pro command files and also give you the arguments. So like, this is the syntax effectively. What you can do dash of a file and then 
uh, as soon as the as soon as basic system parsers as soon as the basic system parsers see the space, it stops and passes runs that file. This whole string is put at 200, and so if the app wants, it can just go scan to a space and then process the arguments. Nothing fancy, but it's it's an enabling step. Um, okay, so um, next steps. Uh, I plan to modify the, the BF100 global page so that it's easier to turn on and off some of these features without having to change the machine type <laughs> to, uh, to force stuff, particularly for the lower case. Um, so Cap CompuG Plus and Cap Doctor have different uh, unhappiness levels when they see lowercase names. CompuG Plus, when it sees a lowercase volume name uh, from ProDOS 2.5, goes, oh wait, I'm not sure, this doesn't look like normal ProDOS, it must be a DOS 3.3 disk. And so it tries to use its, its built-in DOS 3.3 parser, which doesn't really work out very well. Um, and uh, so my plan right now is to have a global page variable which allows us to just disable uh, features. So apps that, that don't play nice with lowercase or the big year support for some reason, we can just turn those features off so that ProDOS will use the older uh, interface, basically the, old, the older methodology for those apps. But I think we probably want to modify a few key apps that are in heavy use so that they work with lowercase and they work with the longer year, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, looking for contributors um, because you know modifying either of those two apps is a very easy standalone thing uh, that anyone could do, and uh, might be an interesting learning experience. Um, and also looking for testers. So there's enough new stuff in now that it's kind of getting to the point where we probably need to go with a broader coverage and try some apps. And just I, I've been using using this as my kind of daily driver, you know, Prodos for the last since January. Um, and it's, it's been fine. Um, I, I, I have found some bugs along the way, but it really just needs, needs more eyeballs. So uh, I encourage people to, uh, to participate if they have time and interest. Um, yeah, and that's it. Questions? Yeah. <coughs> Did um, any capabilities of Protoss 2.4 or Apple's versions have to come out in order to make room for all this new stuff? Um, not intentionally, or not, not as far as I know. Uh, uh, yeah, most most of the work to put these features in actually wasn't putting the feature in. It was rewriting big chunks of not very efficient code to get enough bytes to put the stuff in. Um, so yeah, as far as I know, nothing. But that's another reason why I need testers because there's you know testing of the new features, but you know as important or maybe more important is just making sure there's been no regressions in previous functionality. But good question. Yeah. With the uh, year change, will uh uh, hardware like the no slot clock or other things take advantage of that automatically or would they have to be updated or? Yeah, they would have to be updated. So uh, I wrote a no slot clock driver which I intended to embed into ProDOS. I haven't updated that yet to the new format because there's still some discussion as to exactly what that, you know, is 10 bits the right size and is it three bits and seven, is that the right way to store it? And so I've, I've, hold it off, I've, I've held off on, re, uh, on modifying the various clock drivers. So the Thunder Clock and the GS Clock and the um, No Sock Clock drivers um, to to adopt a new format until I'm sure we've locked it down. So, so it should just be a driver issue, not a hardware issue. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately. Okay. yeah. Yeah. As far as I know, there's no real hardware issues with any of these changes. It's it's really just going to be um, the driver has to know about the limitations of each piece of hardware. And so, for example, once we hit 1940 and the GS Clock wraps over, we'll, we'll need to know that. Year 1900 is really 1941 or whatever, or, or 2041, right? So, uh, so yeah, we're going to uh, the drivers will need to have some changes. But um, yeah, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, how's the te what's the state of technical documentation? Uh, pretty much nothing. Uh, there's some emails, uh, but um, there's really been no updating of the docs. When I've released Protoss in the past, I've basically had a README file that listed changes. And then uh, there's been some discussions on the uh, on Usenet groups and some posts I can call Apple website. Uh, yeah, that's another area that would be great if someone wants to help be a contributor is just gather up some of this information which is out there in different forms. And, uh, and also, I think someone made a pretty good um, text-based or HTML-based version of the Protoss technical manual uh, many years ago. Uh, but it's, it's quite editable, as, as I understand it. And so that would be, be another nice thing to do is to uh, kind of incorporate new, new things into that documentation so we have more of a canonical reference uh, for how things work. 
All right, anything else? Yep. Is, is there any reason to think that, uh, do, do we know whether Product 2.5 works with AppleScript servers? Um, I think it does. Uh, Michael Gudero, I don't know if you've tested 2.5 or, you, you know, AppleShare servers? It appears to work, but I haven't given it a thorough go through. Okay. Oh, Sounds like a good, good thing to test. I will, I will check it. Okay, that'd be good. Uh, AppleShare is, you know, it's largely independently, uh, an independent implementation of the MLI, so if it gets the call first, then, you know, it's going to do what it normally does. And uh, the only thing that might be an issue is, like, prefix changes while you're prefixed to an AppleShare directory might not work out with the dot dots and a uh, few things like that that I, our core cases will need to be fleshed out and tested. Okay, yeah. If you test it, is it uh, like using the pro dots on a Mac to make sure that it's correct? No, I, yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't tried on a Mac. Um, Michael might have. I think he's got a, a two compatibility or two two card, right? Yeah, it will. Uh, it will boot on it. But again, that's not what I typically test on. I've been using two five on my TC for the most part. Uh, that's where I've been spending most of my time on it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, another thing that can be tested further. There was I think he may have been talking about the Mac OS as the ability to read Protoss disks. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that shouldn't be affected other than. Um, unless it doesn't like the, f the we, once, once we get past 1940, or to 2040, um, it may not like the extra bits. So, um, you know, in, in that, we've, that we've used. Uh, but, um, yeah, again, that's nothing that probably should be tested and would be pretty easy to test. Just we can use a block editor and put some bits in there and then see if, if what the Mac does with it. <clears throat> All right, anybody else? Thank you.